Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a 3 versus 3 for you. It's on Sirtis Major. Now we've seen a lot of this map in the 5 versus 5s, but there is a 3 versus 3 version and it is pretty cool how it works out. Basically you're just minus your two slots over here and uh, the map is slightly more compact but you have all of the same major features. Tons of reclaim around the spawns and around all of these hills. You can set up your spam and or teching very quickly. Huge civilian base in the center which contains either a ton of stuff to capture or more than likely things to display, destroy and reclaim. That's how it usually turns out. So let's go ahead and introduce the people here and we will get started on this. On the right hand side or northern team, either one is an app description, we have Nexus of Reality taking UEF, Modka Fox as Cybrin and Eaton as Aeon. That is uh, 13 and no, three 1400s and three 1300s over here. Pretty close to balance, but not exactly quite right. Egg roll taking UEF for the Southern team. Code Pants as UEF. Oh, three UEFs, Purgatory. The faction loyalty is strong with the Southern team. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and see what's going on here. Looks like we've got a early hydro and air build for the egg roll. That is going to be an aggressive land push for Code Pants and then Factory on the Edge for Purgatory. This is a pretty popular move right here. It allows you to get these factories online extremely quickly. Much quicker than walking an engineer or your ACU around the outside edge. We have Nexus of Reality doing the same thing. He has rushed a Mech Marine, which is probably going to get intercepted by this handy dandy tank. And then we have Eaton going for an early air build. He has designated himself the interceptor produ producer. Gotta get my tongue out of its knot for today. And then we have a land factory down going over here in the edge and two in the front. Modka Fox actually edge built a factory here as well. And yes, there went Mr. McMarine. Landed a couple of hits on that tank, but overall was ill-fated. We got an engineer coming out. It's going to set up a huge land spam for Nexus. So Nexus is going spam. We've got heavy reclaim and early tank production, but looks like not too much in the way of spam factories for the egg roll. This is going to be something to watch up here because I think there's enough spam going down to actually run over the egg roll just looking at the preliminary stuff very early in the game so let's move to the middle we've got a lobo firing on these tech one point defense which you definitely need to get rid of before you close on this center base if you do not there are three of them and they are devastating if you get your a acu in range and uh sfo that is the clan tag for the guys that uh modified or made this map. I forget if they made the original copy or if they modified a version, but I did notice that way back when when I casted this last time. A little bit of a signature right there. All right. Got a tank and a bomber. The hover bomb is not going to work out for that. Looks like is that another tank? That may actually be another tank. <laughs> I saw the chat in the side saying micro and I'm assuming that means that uh, he out microed someone else. That tank has two kills, which is good for a T1 unit. Typically, it is kill and be killed for them. Ooh! Don't die! No! The Expansioneer is down, so that means the factory spam has temporarily stopped. And there are exactly zero interceptors in the air for the southern team. So this bomber is going to have his... Uh, choice of what he wants to kill for a little bit of time anyway probably gonna go for these guys yes ouch always sad when you lose your power production but immediately queuing up some more down there we have nexus of reality building some uh building these mass extractors in the expansion oh no no! This is exactly the worst thing that you can do in the middle of the game. Okay, let's click on the egg roll. He is hardcore power stalled. 
and he is building mass storage instead of power it is one button apart on the build menu and sometimes you click it accidentally and it is painful oh so painful this is gonna plague him for the next portion of the game he's gonna be surviving on overflow until he figures out what the crap he did wrong and oh no it is the dreaded penis of point defense uh, hopefully that will deny nexus of reality it's one of those newfangled weapons and there's another this one has a bit more bite though it actually has <laughs> it actually has a point defense I believe these are sterile yes they are impotent they have no firepower got T1 bomber up at the top not really doing anything and a double ACU push to the middle here that's basically gonna leave code pants completely out of luck but he does have T2 on his ACU he's gonna lay down some T2 point defense here and that is going to help him push away these two ACUs that are encroaching on his position uh, unfortunately these guys are gonna get a ton of reclaim before that happens are going to be able to basically chillax right here, sucking mass out of the mid, gaining every bit of an advantage that that entails. Anytime you get more mass, it is a good thing. One thing you don't want to do, though, is stand next to one of these T3 power generators with your ACU. I have done this before, and it ended terribly. Instead of killing me, the uh, enemy targeted the quantum reactor which I did not notice because I did not get the ACU under fire message and I was busily off doing my own thing and bam my ACU exploded because the uh, yes that is a large explosive force to stand next to thankfully neither one of these guys did okay Eaton needs to be thinking about running away because he is down to 2700 health and isn't this cheeky we have this engineer up here that built a radar and a couple of mass extractors over here on this side the egg roll is going to reclaim that position and he is still building mass storage i wonder if he has noticed yet he probably has not he's slacked off to the last slot on the leaderboard and he's only outputting 10 mass per tick because he is power stalled i'm just waiting to see in the chat when he figures out what the hell is going on you know, these would actually be technically anatomically correct if you put a point defense right here. And somebody's going to submit a cast where they do exactly that. I just know it. I can feel it in my guts. All right, we've got five triads down here. That is a lot of T2 point defense. Just for the sake of holding this, I'm going to make a prediction. Modka Fox is going to go full-on Viper spam and those point defense are going to be completely and utterly useless we do have a little bit of an advancement from nexus of reality he is a little brave not too much he is being somewhat cautious not getting within range of any of these units but he is definitely letting the egg roll feel the pressure letting him know that he is right there ready to take him on got a lot of build power going down over here and a little bit of an engagement in the middle um nice little touch there backing up the auroras ah someone finally noticed <laughs> building mass storage although he does have uh, uh he built some more power generators adjacent here so that's what gave him the extra income and this is what the Auroras are capable of. They back off slightly, attack from full range, and they're able to wipe the floor with the UEF T1 tanks as long as they are microed out of reach. Well, got plenty of mass storage anyway. No chance of overflowing. He's queuing up more T1 power generators while not killing the mass storage spam. So fail. All right. We got an attack missile launcher. Those are always fun. You can literally rain on someone's parade if they do not have a T2 unit to build a TMD with. Here comes the kill. Oh no! The cliff was in the way. Now that is a killjoy. Absolutely, and never. Ah, oh, there it is. 
There it is. The egg roll finally realized it. <laughs> Nobody was going to say anything until he figured it out on his own. There's a connection. Kaboom! Losing the mass extractor and all four storages. It's a hard hit to take. More attack missiles coming in. However, if he's not careful, these T1 tanks, can they fire over the edge? They may be able... Ah, there we go. Mobile artillery is going to fire down. That is a hero artillery right there. Those two are going to take out that attack launcher. I think there's no way that the ACU can get over there in time. If you're on the northern side, we have three impotent point defense structures. And Nexus of Reality is just kind of hanging around in the back. He's got a couple of flapjacks, a couple of mongooses, and he is T1. Possibly with the gun upgrade, I think. Nope. Unupgraded commander. What do you know? Don't listen to me. I know not of what I speak. And pause. There we go. Yes. TML is down. It did do a bit of damage. I think it was worth the mass. But it is no more. And yes, here is the Viper spam. These guys are annoying son of a guns. You cannot defeat them with TMD. They are absolutely far and away more mass efficient than TMD is. You will kill a UEF firebase as long as he doesn't have T3 and Ravagers yet. That is the kicker, and in this case, he does not. The egg roll has decided to dive in. Now, he has an inordinate amount of T1 spam here. Nexus of Reality does have T2, but just not enough of it yet. He's not hit critical mass where he can deny this T1 push, but he does have a lot of point defense building in the back. It is going to get harder and harder for egg roll as he advances. His units are going to peter out. He's going to get farther and farther away from his production. Someone who is an English major tell me, is it farther and farther or further and further? I'm sure that there's a rule somewhere that deals with that, but I know not what it is. And at the moment, I don't particularly care. Point defense is finished up. That's going to start putting the hurt down on these strikers. The pillars are going to hang out right here and return fire momentarily. No, they're going to run for the hills. Don't know why he's not pursuing. Maybe in fear of the overcharge, which is a perfectly logical thing to be afraid of. We have oblivion turrets going down on the right. That is going to be able to pull a small amount of aerial de area denial. Not aerial denial. And the Vipers continue to accumulate. You can see there are now no more T2 point events. There are no more Civ buildings in just a second. And I think there are so many Vipers here that these guys are actually going to be able to damage groups of moving units. Because there's so many missiles that you just simply can't get out of the way of all of them. That is a beautiful thing. Or terrifying, depending on which end of the equation you're at. Egg roll is going to go into full retreat, but not before he moves up here and tries to hit this expansion, but there are point defense. Once again, impeding his progress. There's now a pretty good handful of pillars up here. A couple more added to this bunch, and I think that Nexus will have the critical mass of pillars needed to deny a T1 push. Is not quite there yet, but he is getting close. Purgatory on the southern side is trying to push back this Oblivion um, array, I guess you would call it, that is being built here. I think there was going to be an attempt at a point defense creep, but Purgatory is going to shut it down before there's enough point defense to bother him too terribly much. There's some Obsidians here in reach, but I think a couple of well-placed overcharges should deal with that. No problemo. Yep, there it is. Shooting three units at once. That is the glory of the overcharge. This is a unupgraded commander? Or does he have... Nope, he has T2. I could not tell if that was a better T2, but I guess the HP isn't right for a vet, so I should have known better. 
Gunships on the move. That means we've got T2 Air somewhere back here. Yes, that is belonging to Code Pants. Is going to push up on these Vipers, killing off a few of them. Got some engineers in the back here rushing a flak. That is the main enemy of those pesky gunships. As soon as that gets online, those gunships are going to either flee or fall. One or the other. Got some production going down over here. Unfortunately, these had just been upgraded to support factories. So that was a bit of an investment. And should Purgatory choose to push just a little bit, he can kill all of that. He really needs to. Anytime you can rob your opponent of build power, that is something that needs to take place. There's been a bit of T1 bomber action going on over here. You can see it's just kind of picking away at this group of units. Eggroll is grabbing an upgrade. That's probably gun because I didn't see his health go up. Going to take a gander at his upgrade list, and yes, that was gun. So he's going to throw down a rail gun to try to get rid of some of these bombers that are aggravating him so much. His teammate, Coat Pants, is going to send some interceptors. Thankfully, those are going to be enough to clear the air and then go ahead and take care of those bombers. You can see the gunships dodging in and out, trying to land a hit or two, but between the stationary flak. Ah, there is not a mobile flag. I thought I saw one, but it is simply more Vipers. Because you can never have enough Vipers, ever. Pillar is finally moving in over here. Going to kill off those support factories. It's going to rob Eaton of the ability to produce the obsidians in mass like he was doing before. He's relying on one factory now that is heavily assisted to pull those. And why he's building a power generator here, I will never know. He should have built it in the back because right here it is extremely vulnerable. And now we have a pillar on pillar clash. Nexus of Reality is a bit low on health to be at the front lines of a T2 fight. It's backing up a bit. That has got to be a gun upgraded comm looking at the range of it. Yes, it is. Gun comm versus gun comm. T2 versus T2. And a UEF mirror might get a bit interesting gunships still hammering away at those vipers whenever they can uh, reach them without being in too much danger but there's the mobile flap flak bangers gonna move up to the front and take care of that pesky problem all of this is cleared out over here and we have a drop there's gonna be four pillars there's some mercies here though it's going to be interesting to see if those mercies kick in automatically and kill off those tanks. I don't want to keep an eye over there. So much going on over here, though. We do have a shield gen over here. Nexus has picked up a vet or two. And yes, mercies are going to kick in and kill off those pillars. That is an expensive pillar to take care of. Ah, more in the back. So many drops. Purgatory is doing it right. Actually, he's doing everything right. He's top of the eco list with 96 mass per tick. He's up there on power, and he's been doing hardcore drops over here, forcing his opponent to deal with them. And that is always a good way to knock your opponent off of his level footing. Nexus and Egg Roll engaged. They're both dropping in health. We got 65 and 11. That was another veterancy for Nexus. Pulling over charges as quickly as he can, but he just doesn't have any more units. He's got two more pillars headed in from the back. A T1 bomber, another pillar, nothing substantial, and he's got a gun comm and about eight or nine pillars on his ACU. You can see how quickly the health is just falling away from that commander. I believe... Oh! Another vet! That may be what saves him. He's got a mobile shield in the back coming, and he's got a cliff that he can run around here. He needs to get away as quickly as possible. Code Pants actually taking a lot of fire there too. You can see the health in the bottom left. I can pan around and keep the health. I had not noticed that before, but I figured that out the other day. Got gunships, everything. There's the mobile shield. Oh, 900 health. He's in it, but an overcharge will drop that shield and that commander will go down. 
Gunships are down thanks to some air cover from a teammate. And one more overcharge and he's dead. No! First SEU nuke. Nexus is down, which is really funny. The egg roll played exceptionally well. And his teammates supported him with power overflow because to build mass storage like that and power stall for basically the first 10 minutes of the game, maybe not that much, but it seemed like it, um, <laughs> to be able to overpower your opponent at that point is you got to be doing something right. Let's see how low he was in score compared to Nexus of Reality. Admittedly, there were a couple of gunships in there to help out from Code Pants, but Egg Roll, that was very well done. But, Modka Fox now has T3 online. You can see the T3 mobile artillery right here in the middle of the map. That is raining fire and brimstone down upon any units that dare to walk too close, but actually at this moment, he's targeting the base. But, uh... The cyber and artillery is so inaccurate that it's actually having trouble killing this T2 mass extractor. You can see how many craters there are from firing, and it's barely even hurt the thing. We got two bricks kiting around. It's going to deny that push. Bricks are uber strong, especially when you move away from the attack. Code Pants is getting out of dodge while he still can. There's Cerberus turrets going down to guard the pass, still spamming vipers. Vipers everywhere, and then the T3 mobile artillery. Not going to be easy to stop that, especially when they get right here, they will be able to reach the base. He's building a shield. He's trying to take preventative measures. I just don't see how that's going to help him. Eventually, that shield and any more that he builds are going to be overwhelmed. There's just a huge splash on these artillery. Excellent for taking down shields. Over here on the right, we've not visited over here recently. We do have a Serenity laying down damage on the Triad. You can see the damage over time effect that that has. Ah, the brick. The lovely brick. Taking care of this uh, pass over here. We've got a fire base over here and a fire base over here, but who needs fire bases when you have bricks? These guys are locked into a PD war. I say a PD war and I say locked, but that's actually not an entirely accurate picture. Basically, we have an ACU with a couple of Percivals and then someone who has decided not to be aggressive. Yeah, there's a couple Harveys. Yeah, there's a couple Mobile T3 artillery, but overall, this is looking fairly static on the right side. Some of some obsidians are moving forward, but they're going to kind of hang out right there. Not really take too aggressive a posture. posture. Up in the middle here, we do have some more pillars engaging these vipers. So many Cerberus turrets. They may suck on their own, but by the time you get uh, that is a whopping seven Cerberus turrets built. They actually do pack in a decent amount of damage. Eaton is pulling resource allocation. That is going to give him the ability to push T3 air should he so choose. At the moment, he's building a T2 gunship. I have to see what he plans to do with that. He's already running T3 air. Or T3 land, excuse me. Has a handful of Harbingers out. And these three Percivals cleaned up those obsidians nicely. And over here, looks like, um, did a brick die? I don't, I think so, actually. Regardless, there are pillars trying to move in, but these awesomely long-ranged bricks are able to maneuver and kill off these pillars. You can see here in the back, this 1307 one, as he was coming around the corner, he moved the damaged brick to the back and the other two that were more healthy to the front to take damage in order to keep all three bricks alive and dealing damage. Very well done on that. That is something that uh, a lot of times you forget to execute, but when done properly, it is amazing how much you can do if you move damaged units to the back of your force because that allows you to keep your 
entire damage per second total online for far longer than just letting your units get picked off one by one on a consistent basis. Right here in the middle we have a couple of more bricks. They are trying to deal with all of these pillars here. We do have a triad up here that's uh, going to help defend the pass, but the bricks are going to win, I think. And win handily at that. All right, it is finally starting to tone down. We're entering into the late game phase. This is where things start teching up a bit harder. We might see a T4 soon. I would not be surprised. We have a T3NG and a T3 power generator going up. The next logical step is a monkey lord. Up here in the top left, we do have Code Pants. He is dropping some engineers to get a base started. And, you know, a base up here is probably not going to go far. But any little bit of extra mass that you can reclaim, any little bit of wrench you can throw in the works of the other team is helpful. So, reclaiming, building mass extractors, maybe even spam up a couple of factories and pull some T1 artillery spam, all would be good things to do. And we're getting up to a large number of Percivals over here. We've got six... And actually, there's more than six. There's about a dozen total, but some of them are splitting off to this side. Purgatory is going to try to overcharge these two bricks, I think. Shedding a lot of health to get it done, but between the ACU's overcharge and a couple of hits from those Percivals, I think he will be fine. There it is. Brick is down, but there are Vipers hammering away at these mass extractors we got two down these guys are gonna back off don't want to leave themselves overly exposed to the percivals and I called it there's the monkey lord building in the back of the base hopefully he can use that to clear out some of this other stuff that's going on got a strap bomber over here actually it has killed off a couple of mass extractors Nicely done. He's damaging the eco of Eaton, which is going to set this team a bit behind. They're already struggling a little bit. Stratbomber's going to get shot down by some well-placed swift winds. And holy cow, the egg roll decided to personally invade Modka's space. Why you would drop your ACU into a dead-end canyon, I don't know. Let's go ahead and look at their side of the fight. They have not scouted. They're now scouted. They have now scouted the Monkey Lord. I'm sure Egg Roll is going to want to get out of there and get out of there quickly now that he's seen what's waiting for him. Strap Bomber's not doing a whole lot there. Had two of them go to waste on this T3 mobile anti-air. That is a glorious unit. I do love them. I think they were an excellent addition to the FAF balance. Serve a very good purpose in kind of reducing the OP-ness of T3 air. Percival's not so great against T1 units. You can see they're wasting 1,600 damage per shot. So they're wasting 1,450 damage every time they shoot a T1 engineer. And two Percivals shot the same engineer. You're pushing 3k damage potential that was wasted on that. So sad to see. This brick right here, though, is just going to town. He is already vetted. A couple of times, actually. Let's take a look at him. That is a hero brick. Vetted twice on his way to his third. He's killed off a T3 factory. No! Taking a Janus to the face. And then Percival's. Yup, that is going to end the brief life of that brick. It was heroic for a time, but like all heroes, he eventually falls. Monkey Lord is finished. They're pinging egg roll saying, get out while you still can. It's going to be very sad if he gets shot down. We've got a whole cloud of interceptors right here. Should they choose 
No, they're going to get trapped in between these two groups of interceptors. T1 air control for the win. And egg roll is going to be able to beat a hasty retreat in the safety of his warm and cozy transport. You know ACUs fly first class. They're in any economy class for these guys. They are supreme after all. Strat Bomber taking out the Bill Power and the Mass Extractor. Best way to go right there. Slows them down from rebuilding their stuff. Where did he drop? There's the ACU. Monkey Lord is going to take out everything in the back. Hopefully clear out what's left of this base. Yes, Control k it to keep the Monkey Lord from vetting. Although it did already pull five kills. That's going to allow Modka to finally get this expansion back. It's been, what, it's approximately nine minutes since this guy died, and these guys still haven't been able to claim the expansion. Didn't realize I was already at plus two. Don't want to speed this up too much. Over here on the right, you have a group of Percivals versus an equal group of Harbingers, but you have to remember mass equivalency because the Percivals cost far more than the Harbingers do and have way more health, way more range, and a bit more damage. Not a whole lot more damage, but a bit. So the losses are actually about even because of these three Oblivion turrets here. But now that the Percivals are kiting away, it's going to get a little bit more noticeable. They are going to be able to deal with Harbingers that advance on them. T2 transport dropping a brick. Ah, yes. Just getting units to the front line faster. And here comes Mr. Monkey Lord. This is not what you want to have happen here. We've got a whole congregation of bricks. Mobile anti-air to protect it from strap bombers and gunships. And the Monkey Lord. All right here. And you know what? Ah, yes. I can dual screen. I'm going to try something here. Just for fun. I'm going to play with the camera here. Indulge me, folks. <laughs> oh, all of those uh, all of those constructs there seem to be pointing in the wrong direction. We've got all of these Percivals that are locked in right here. Are they going to be able to stand? It looks like they are. Holy cow. Focus firing that Monkey Lord down. And... It's not quite toast. That was close. There's five left. Ah, there it went. Strat Bombers got it. Nicely done. Nicely done. Okay, enough dual screen. <laughs> I may try that at some point uh, to get really cool shots. But I had never tried it with my casting software on and in dual screen mode. So I had to see if it would actually work without crashing out my game. Thankfully it did not, because I would hate to ruin the rest of this cast. And yes, we now have a bunch of broken penises. We all know how much that hurts. Okay, hopefully you all don't know how much that hurts, because that would just suck. But anyway, Nexus, not Nexus, the egg roll is mourning his loss. Nexus is long dead and out of this world. Why do I keep bringing him up? Strap bombers circling around the middle and they are going to get pulled back. I think they're auto-targeting at the moment. They definitely don't want to keep flying over all this. There's a ton of flak and then some SAMs in the back. So as soon as they fly over these units, they're going to get pegged by the SAMs. And there we go, pulling it back manually again. You don't want to park your strap bombers too close to the opposing units because if you park there, they're just going to go into automated attack mode and lose themselves. That is probably the worst feeling that you can possibly get when you save up like 50 strap bombers and then you're almost ready to use them and you leave them hovering out in the water or something. And they just take it upon themselves to head for the landmass and start attacking an area with 20 SAMs that you were planning to go around. That is almost enough to make you sick. Percival's moving in on the side here, but 
They gotta stay cautious, even though they are stronger. There's quite a few Harbingers, and we saw how these guys fared versus Harbingers and Obsidians earlier. So definitely don't want to make that mistake again and lose units unnecessarily. But they are going to move around the outside edge. Stratbomber's moving in again. I think that was... Was that intentional? That couldn't have been intentional. The targeting was very strange. That was cool, though. Got a whole bunch of kills on those T1 engineers sitting there reclaiming. Alright, Percival's are moving in again. Maybe with the help of some mobile shields, these guys will be able to overcome the fire base. Progression, progression, that is what you want. You know, the Aeon factory being assisted is actually an excellent backdrop to this battle. <laughs> I love how those things look. They're so cool. The glowing bright beams and everything going on. Strap bombers are still hovering around in the middle. Oh look, it's a bubble protruding from a cliff. It's actually a real sphere. For those of you who had not noticed before, if you watched the naval tutorial, you know, because we already had that discussion. Because the bulwark shield is not quite exactly centered. It actually protrudes farther down into the ocean than it does on the surface. But, that is a discussion for another day. A couple of bricks trying their absolute best to deny a huge group of Percivals, but unfortunately it is just not meant to be. This many Percivals will absolutely demolish bricks, except for the fact that they don't have radar. T3, uh, ASF is going to fly over though, and that is going to let the Percivals spot the bricks, and immediately, kaboom, going to all get shot down. That's quite the substantial little group of Percivals. Needs to get a move on though, somewhere important, not just sit back there. And please don't go after T1 mechs with 10 Percivals. It means so much overkill. Like swatting a gnat with a sledgehammer. I think I've said that before. I really like that comparison. Although in reality, swatting a gnat with a sledgehammer would be extremely difficult because this, the gnat would probably just fly away. Because the sledgehammer will not exactly approach its target at the fastest velocity possible. We have a GC on the move. I don't know if it's advisable for this GC to approach this group of Percivals. We all know how that ends, but... Ah, those aren't bricks. Those are T3 mobile anti-air. The awesome little scorpion dudes. Those are not going to be able to assist the GC in its endeavors. Percivals closing in on the base. What do we have here? An upgrade. That is a chest upgrade. No. Yes. Yeah, that that's the Mazer upgrade, I think. I believe that is the Mazer upgrade. So, he's going to take his commander into battle. Maybe try to fight off some of these Percivals that are invading his space. He's under heavy assistance on that one. I hear Strat Bombers or something somewhere. Probably just got shot down while I wasn't paying attention. And, am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Yes, there's the dot. That means that is a Mazer. Oh, too many Percivals. Too many Percivals. Ah! GC versus Percivals in the south, and Percivals versus Ma. Oh, no. I don't think he had the gun upgrade. His didn't have enough range. I'm sorry, but even if you have the per. Even if you have the range upgrade and Mazer, 20 Percivals is a lot to kill. And. Nope. Too many Percivals for that GC. Alright, I think that is the end of this game. Well fought by Modka Fox. That was very nearly a comeback. He had so many bricks on course. He had that Monkey Lord, which unfortunately was strap bombed to death. That was a very hard loss to take. Overall, excellent play from all of these guys. But losing that player up here proved to be the undoing. Even though <laughs> one guy built mass storage instead of power. That is something that you always, always, always have to double check. And I would make a comment about how long it's been since I've done it. But that would inevitably jinx me. And I would do it in my next game. So I'm not going to say anything or declare a number. Strat Bomber's coming in. Hitting that GC. 
Looks like Eaton is just going to spam GCs until he dies. This GC is actually going to fare reasonably well. Percivals are not focusing their fire. They're wasting a lot of fire on that Harbinger. I think this group could have technically killed the GC, but the GC is about to vet now. It is... There it is. There's the veteran. See? And these Percivals are going to stream in, but Percy's on the ridge. Boom! Headshot. Eaton is down. You gotta watch those units on the cliff. Not that he really had a chance if he didn't die to that, but units sitting on the cliff right here are annoying son of a guns because it's kind of hard to anticipate how far their reach is, especially when you can get like vipers and artillery and stuff up on this side hammering down on the middle. Alrighty, that was a game on Sirtis. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I've had a couple people recently ask me to showcase a 2K plus player game again. I will try to find one, but if any of you have an epic one or know of someone who has an epic one, I would really appreciate you guys submitting a replay to me of higher ranks because usually what people submit are better than what I dig up on my own because I kind of go in at random when I do that. Alrighty, that is going to wrap it up for this game and this cast. I think that's all I have to say about everything that I have to talk about. So, without further ado, I'm just going to get out of here. I'll see you guys in the next cast. As always, thank you so much for watching.